Ever wonder why donors give to our organization? I'm going to tell you now. As a leader of a nonprofit organization, it should be your goal to be a good steward of your resources, the gifts that come into your organization. But you also need to drill down to better understand those people, corporations, churches, or other entities who, in most cases, sacrifice quite a bit to give to keep you moving forward in your mission. It's important to understand your constituency so that you can best comprehend and meet their needs. This will impact the way you market to them, including communication, making contact, and even how often you communicate with them. Our partners usually give for two key reasons, institutional reasons and individual reasons. Institutional reasons include how they view the organization and how our efforts affect their giving. Institutional reasons can be seen as outward while individual reasons are seen as inward motivations. The institutional reasons that impact their decision to give to our organization are effectiveness, worthiness, stability, state of leadership, and perceived benefits of giving. Effectiveness asks, how do we use their money? As I said, are we being good stewards of their gifts? Are we spending wisely? Are we ensuring the organization does not go into debt or expenses do not exceed revenue for more than a few months out of a year? Are the gifts having the maximum impact possible? Are we keeping administrative costs low, 20 to 30 percent or less? Is a significant portion going to direct program efforts? Can we report back on exactly how their gift is being used to change a life? Worthiness asks the question, are we considered a worthwhile investment? Is there a positive return on investment, ROI? at least one to one or two to one or better? Are we communicating our mission, vision, and values and accomplishing our goals, or at least a majority of the goals that we set every year? Are we posting the goals so that the donors can evaluate our performance? Are there regular reports on performance? Stability asks the question, has our organization been around for decades, years, or only a few months? Do we have a track record of hiring quality staff and keeping those staff over the years? Are we, as an organization, actively involved in the community, or at least the staff actively involved in the community? Associations, clubs, churches, other organizations are always important to be involved in. State of Leadership asks, do our partners have the confidence in our leadership? Do the volunteers have confidence in our leadership? And of course, do the full and part-time staff have confidence in the leadership? Is there a track record of longevity from the leaders or does leadership change every few years? Does leadership step out to get to know donors and volunteers? Do the leaders value relationships with donors? Finally, perceived benefits ask, do our partners feel as though they benefit from being a part of what we are doing? Do they see results and does our organization report back on a regular basis at least every six months showing the impact made by our gift? And are those reports specific in what was achieved? Those are the institutional or outward reasons people give to an organization. But our partners do give for individual reasons, inward reasons. Those reasons include obligation, gratitude, the need to be needed, to be a worthwhile member of a worthwhile cause, recognition, need for accomplishment, or meet a need, spiritual or scriptural, tax benefits, or simply because someone asked them. Obligation or gratitude are linked more to giving back to an organization that has meant a lot to them or impacted their lives in some way. That could, that could include helping them personally or a family member or a friend. 
Many of us have a need to be needed, a desire to be wanted, for someone to care about us or how we feel. Being a part of the solution to someone else's problem and getting thanked in return means a great deal to some donors. If our organization is accomplishing a lot or has attained some level of prominence due to reputation or achievements, that can feed the self-esteem of some donors who wish to be valued and are seen as a worthwhile member of a worthwhile cause. This works hand in hand with a donor's need for recognition. That's why some donors desire public recognition and why an organization will offer a list of names of individuals or corporations and the amount they give in programs during their events, magazines or other publications, on plaques, on walls, and bricks in the hallway at a permanent facility. But there are also some donors who shy away from public recognition, notoriety, and instead demand anonymity. So you need to be sensitive of that. Some donors get their value and appreciation simply by seeing tangible achievements or accomplishments and to see that they are meeting a specific need. They want to see that their gift made a real difference, especially if those goals were measurable or made a positive difference in the life of an individual. Donors can also give for spiritual or scriptural reasons. If your organization is a faith-based organization, some donors may give because of a duty to God or in gratitude for what God has done to them in, in their lives, or in response to a command or decree made in Scripture to give a portion of their income. Some people get great value from the tax benefits or rewards offered to donors who give to organizations that are nonprofit in the United States. And lastly, some people simply give because someone asked them to give. I once heard a story of a woman who was a longtime faithful member of a small church in a small town. A decade earlier, she lost her husband to cancer and was now in a losing battle herself. Her pastor took great pleasure in going to visit her each day, singing with her and reading passages from the Bible. He was also mindful that she and her husband had amassed a significant estate and felt confident that he would see some or most of the money upon her death. That fateful day came and she passed on. Soon after, the pastor read in the paper that the woman had left the entirety of her estate to her husband's alma mater. The pastor was more than disappointed. He called the university advancement officer and talked to the person who actually obtained the gift from the woman. It seemed there was no prior relationship, but there was one difference between the university representative and the pastor. The representative asked. All he did was ask for a gift. The pastor just assumed that the church would be in her will. That was not the case. The pastor learned a valuable lesson that day, and I hope you did as well. Learn what motivates your donors, and always ask. If you found this video helpful, let me know by giving it a thumbs up. And if you wish to watch future videos on this channel, hit the subscribe button and also click the bell to be notified immediately of the next release. Also, post a comment below if there were things that you especially enjoyed or if there's topics you would like me to address in future videos. For videos similar to this, click our video above or the playlist listed above to watch other videos related to nonprofit fundraising go to our channel, Development Effectiveness Strategies. And as I always say, I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thank you.